الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا وسندنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فيا عباد الله يوصيكم بتقوى الله وطاعته إن الله مع الذين اتقوا والذين هم محسنون قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولما جاء عيسى بالبينات قال قد جئتكم بالحكمة ولأبينن لكم بعض الذي تختلفون فيه فاتقوا الله وأطيعون إن الله ربي وربكم فاعبدوه هذا صراط مستقيم وقال الله تعالى هو الحي لا إله إلا هو فادعوه مخلصين له الدين الحمد لله رب العالمين صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله لا يقبل من العمل إلا ما كان له خالصا وابتغي به وجهه صدق رسول الله ونطق حبيب الله May Allah's blessings, mercy, and peace be upon us. We thank Allah, we believe in Him, we ask for His help, we seek refuge in Him from the evils of our actions. Dear brothers and sisters, one of, the, one of the most important legacies that our Prophet والسلام, left not only to us but to all humanity is undoubtedly the sermon he gave during the farewell Hajj. It was his last khutbah. The farewell sermon in its essence was a declaration summarizing some of the basic principles of Islam in terms of both worship and morality. In this last call to Muslims, our Prophet ﷺ reminded Muslims that God is one, that superiority is not based on race, but only through piety, that Muslims are brothers to each other, and re-emphasized the necessity of prayer, fasting, charity, and other acts of worship. He reminded Muslims that he left the Qur'an and prophetic sunnah as two trusts, and that if they hold on to them, they will be on the right path. This sermon, which contains some universal moral messages, aims to regulate both the servant's relationship with God and the relations between people. This two-way goal was actually the common effort of all prophets in their conveyance process. All messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the one hand wanted to purify the people around them from false beliefs and to establish tawheed in their mind and minds and hearts. On the other hand, they wanted to bring the society to a more mature and higher level in terms of morality. 
They preached religious and human principles that would lead people around them for, from ignorance to wisdom, from darkness to light. In this context, we also encounter a speech, a speech similar to the farewell sermon in history, in terms of addressing the masses and containing basic moral messages in the life of another prophet, the prophet Isa alayhi salam. In the Gospels we have today, most intensely in the Gospel of Matthew, a striking historical event about the Prophet Jesus and the divine message he brought is mentioned, is narrated. In the relevant passages, a sermon that the Prophet Isa gave to the crowds around him after climbing to the top of a mountain is mentioned. This speech, delivered in a highly literary and impressive style, is like his last call to society. The sermon in question essentially gives us important clues about what the basic message, the divine call that the Prophet Isa conveyed to the society was. Like all prophets, the Prophet Jesus also criticized the false understandings of piety he observed in his own society and devoted himself to preaching what true piety and true servitude should be like. He fundamentally challenged the approach reducing piety just to formalism. In this context, the main emphasis of the Prophet Isa in his sermon is sincerity, ikhlas, consciousness and morality in being a servant of the Lord. Isa salam, began his sermon with a divine good news. This is good news for those who don't deviate from the truth, are tender-minded, compassionate, pure-hearted, and are in favor of peace. They will receive mercy and consolation from their Lord, and they will receive a great, great divine reward. The Prophet Jesus tried to re-establish both human relations and the relationship with the Creator on the basis of sincere piety, correct servitude, and morality. On this occasion, he wanted to create a wave of goodness, truth, justice, and mercy that would spread from the individual to the society. Accordingly, first of all, the person should focus on what they do and say and think about their own attitudes and behaviors. When each individual can achieve this, society will rise to a more acceptable level in a spiritual sense. As a matter of fact, for spiritual progress and renewal, instead of waiting for an intervention from outside or from the divine world, men and society must first show a firm determination and action themselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala touches upon this truth in Surah Al-Ra'd. Inna Allah la yugayyiru ma biqawmin hatta yugayyiru ma bi'anfusihim. Indeed, Allah would never change a people's state until they change their own state. This is exactly what the Prophet Isa tried to do. He wanted to eliminate the current passive and soulless stance in society in terms of religious life and instill in them an, un an understanding of piety that would enable them to take direct action and would produce real morality. In this context, Isa warns the crowds 
to correct their own mistakes first, instead of judging others and seeing their mistakes. He condemns those who get angry and say insulting words towards his brothers. He advises them not to complain about each other in disagreement, but to make peace without wasting time. Instead of cursing or speaking bad words against enemies and oppressors, he recommends praying the, to the Lord for their reformation. The Prophet Isa asks people to perform prayer, to perform worship, prayer, fasting, almsgiving, and all kinds of righteous behavior only for the sake of Allah, not for show or social reputation. At this point, he advises that prayer should be done secretly and alone with God behind closed doors. This is actually a state of servitude that our Lord expects from all believers. We see this command of our Lord in the following verse. Udru Rabbikum tadarru'an wa khufiyah innahu la yuhibbu al-mu'tadeen Call upon your Lord humbly and secretly. Indeed, he does not like the trans transgressors. Isa alayhi salam encourages people to be merciful and forgiving. He reminds them that only in this way the Lord will show mercy to them and they will be able to receive divine reward and grace. Another warning of the Prophet Jesus in his sermon is about the temporality of this world and the reality of the afterlife. He advises people to leave aside worldly ambitions, desires and temporary concerns. Instead, he recommends striving for the afterlife and accumulating good deeds. In the prayer he recommends, he teaches that absolute sovereignty is in the hands of the Lord. He emphasizes that his, his will should be dominant in the worldly sphere and that a God-centered life should be kept above everything else. As mentioned in Surah Ali, Ali Imran, Isa salam warned people against disobedience to Allah and called them to worship only Him, not anyone else. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُونَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ رَبِّي وَرَبُّكُمْ فَعَبُدُوهُ هَذَا صِرَاطٌ مُسْتَقِيمٌ Be mindful of Allah and obey me. Indeed, Allah is my Lord and your Lord. So worship him alone. This is the straight path. Accordingly, the only criterion to be taken as reference for believers is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In his sermon, the Prophet Jesus reminds the crowds that the Lord is close to his servants. Thus, he instills in them hope, confidence, and peace that there is always an absolute authority to which they can take refuge. He reminds them that if they turn to their Lord and pray, they will definitely be answered. On the other hand, as we learn from, from Surah Al-Ma'idah, he says about those who make mistakes in appreciating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as is his due, that forgiveness is only in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He attributes all authority to Allah. إِن تُعَذِّبْهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ عِبَادُكُ وَإِن تَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ فَإِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ If you punish them, they belong to you after all. But if you forgive them, you are surely the Almighty, all wise. Dear brothers and sisters, what the Prophet Isa basically criticized was the formalist understanding of piety 
that was dominant in society. A piety devoid of wisdom, sincerity and spirit. What he tried to replace was a piety in which a real sincere consciousness of servitude to the Lord, the most basic moral qualities and the belief in the afterlife were at the center. In his sermon, the Prophet Jesus explains with a very striking analogy the situation of people, or rather the responsibility they bear, who heed his advices. He describes the tender-minded and sincere people who discover pleasure of true servitude as the salt and the light of the earth. He exemplifies the refreshing, regenerating, balancing effect of salt and the illuminating and the reassuring effect of light. They are like salt because they nourish, refresh, renew and mature people spiritually. They are like light because they guide people to the path of truth, true servitude and goodness and enlighten them. With this spiritual renewal, they will provide Isa salam, praise that this community of believers will fill the earth with goodness and develop it, and that the light they spread will constantly shine in front of people, because they bring balance, safety, hope, and tranquility wherever they go, just like salt brings taste and balance to food and light brings vitality and safety. The Prophet Isa believed that people will see their good deeds and righteous lifestyles and glorify the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fact that these believers for whom Isa salam spoke of the divine good news are an element of balance on earth, leaders and peacemakers essentially brings to mind the ideal of the best Ummah in the Qur'an. As stated in Surah Al Imran, the most basic characteristic of the best Ummah is to appreciate Allah as required and to enjoin people to the good and forbid them from evil. Similarly, the Prophet Isa wanted those who heeded his call to be salt and light for the earth and people. He set it as an ideal to build the best community within his own people. Then it should be our duty today to uphold his common, this common ideal, the ideal of a Muslim society based on sincerity, wholeheartedness, justice and good morals which is expressed in the Qur'an and in the concise call of Isa salam. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us all his sincere servants who can appreciate him properly, treat people with mercy and justice and truly attain the consciousness of servitude. Amen. Ala inna ahsan al-kalam wa ablagha al-nidham Kalam Allahi al-malik al-aziz al-allam كما قال الله تبارك وتعالى في الكلام وإذا قرئ القرآن فاستمعوا له وأنصتوا لعلكم ترحمون الحمد لله حمد الكاملين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين تعظيما لنبيه وتكريما لفخامة شان شرف صفيه فقال عز وجل من قائل مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم انصر من نصر الدين واخذل من خذل المسلمين 
اللهم أيد كلمة الحق والدين اللهم وحد كلمة المسلمين اللهم نور قلوبنا بأنوار محبتك وذكرك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم أحينا حياة طيبة بالصحة والسلامة والعافية في الدين والدنيا والآخرة اللهم ارحم أمة محمد رحمة عامة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين عباد الله اتقوا الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون أقم الصلاة